funky country bluesy lick here in the key of A. Right? Usually maybe over an A7. Now remember, a seventh chord is the same as a major chord, except that you're adding a note in. You're adding in that flatted seven. So you're adding a note into the chord that's a whole step down from the root. So if you're playing an A7 chord, you want to add that G into the chord. If you're playing a B7 chord, you want to add that A in. If you're playing a D7 chord, you want to add that C in, and so on, right? So we got an A major. We've got no G in that chord. We've just got the root, the third, and the fifth. That's what makes up a major chord. That's just repeated. So if you've got seven notes in the major scale, Back to one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, A major. We take the first note of that scale, the third note of that scale, one, two, three, and the fifth note, one, two, three, four, five, do, re, mi, fa, so. And we add, we combine those three notes. Root three, five, root three, five, root three, five, root three, five. This will be the two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. We're only taking the one, the three, and the five, and then we're doubling up on them, and we're playing them all at the same time, simultaneously, instead of single notes. We're going to play them, we're going to double up on them, and play them simultaneously and get a major chord. Any other chord in the world is a manipulation of a major chord. That's how I like to look at it. What are we doing to this major chord to make it a minor seven sharp nine or a diminished chord or a half diminished chord? Whatever chord you want to put in there, a 13, an 11, right? What are we doing? We're just manipulating this chord, this one, three, five chord by adding or subtracting notes. That's all we're doing. That's every chord in the book. That should be simple enough for everybody to understand, right? We're just manipulating that major scale. And I've done, go back and look at my early chord videos if you're interested in that. I don't get into a lot of jazz chords, but you'll get the gist of how it works. It's all the same principle. Okay, so over the seventh chord, usually if you're playing the blues, the chords are sevens, right? So instead of A major, D major, E major, A major, or make them all seventh chords and it sounds a little more dissonant, a little rougher, a little darker, a little jazzier. You can hear it already, right? Instead of such a happy A chord, we get major, seven, major, seven. So we're going from getting that darker G note in. If, he, if we have an A note here, and we put this G in it, that's giving us that seventh. So let's turn all of these chords into sevens. Now it's easy to do. Take your major bar chord and take your pinky out. That's it. Now you've got an A7. When you get to this form of the bar chord, all you're going to do is you've got this note. This is a D chord. You've got this D, you want to get this flatted seven in, this C. Remember, a whole step down from the root. So we want to get this C into the chord. Well, how do we do that? It's underneath this finger, hiding right there. Well, all we're going to do is lift this finger up and play these two notes. We were playing these three. One, two, three. One, two, three. We want that one. So we're going to let that one ring out under our bar. And then we're just going to play these two. And leave that one out. Because that's being substituted now with the seven. So major, seven. See how you're getting that? Major, seven. 
See how you're getting that here? As opposed to And then we do the same thing, we move it up to the E. And that's movable everywhere. So you've got your fifth string bar chord, seventh chord, and you got your sixth string bar chord, seventh chord by just taking the pinky out. You can also add the higher seventh in up here. Remember, here's your A chord. You want to get that G in there. Here's a G. And we can move that around. That's movable. Right? So, slide into the chords from a half step below. Makes it sound a million times better already, right? So instead of just... I'm going... You don't want to overdo it, but you get the point. Now, the lick in the beginning. We're not going to play a major scale lick because we've got that seventh in there. Right? The flatted seven. And that note is not in the major scale. But what we do is we play the minor pentatonic scale, the A minor pentatonic scale over that progression because it has the flatted seventh note in it already. There's that G. It has it in there as opposed to the natural seventh that comes in the A major scale, the major scale. So instead of, you've got, so it's already in the minor pentatonic. Right, that's one reason. Also, the minor pentatonic, instead of having the third, which is in our chord, remember we went over the scale? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Our major scale has a third in it. One, three, and a five. Now, in this case, we've added the flatted seven to get that seventh chord. But the three is in the chord. But we're going to play a flatted three against that three, right? Which is dissonant. So here's the third of the chord. Listen to it here. Let's go up higher, right? In the key of A, we've got a C sharp. So we find our C sharp right here. So we've got a C sharp, the natural third in the key of A. There it is, but we're gonna play a flatted third. That's the blues. That's the blues. The flatted seven and the flatted third. So the flatted seven is moved down a whole step, the flatted third is moved down a half step. And that the sound of those two notes against a major chord or a seventh chord gives us the bluesy sound, right? So if you got here's the major their third, here's the major third. very bluesy. Here's the minor third. Ready? See that minor third against that major third that's in the chord gives us this. Instead of the octave, we get that. Now, it doesn't sound like that when you're playing the note, and a lot of times what you'll do is you'll take the minor third and bend it up to the major third. Right? And you don't really want to get there even. You just want to kind of imply that you're going towards the major third. So it's like a half bend. Right? You, everybody know you've heard this a million times in the blues. I even do it in the lick we're going to get to eventually. But what is that? Well, it's the minor third to the major third. 
and then the root. With these notes underneath it. Okay, let's get to the lick. Has a little bit of theory to understand why the blues are the blues and why we play a minor pentatonic scale over a major chord. A seventh chord is a major chord. All right, so I did something like, um, right, so we're grabbing the A up here. And we're right out of the, remember we're playing the A minor pentatonic. All right, so. I grab the A and the E. I'm not gonna go into the theory of every note in the lick and why it works. I'm just gonna show you the lick, all right? You know, like a Johnny B. Good, Chuck Berry type thing. So I'm sliding from the D to the E. And then I'm grabbing this every time. Do it from a half step in or a whole step. In. Whatever you like better. Then I play the minor pentatonic, but I play it in double stops and I put these notes in. Instead of just, I add these in. but I play them together. You can do that on both sets of strings. fast right and there's some dissonant notes in there but that's what makes it sound bluesy right slide into them together all three strings right. it's endless what you can do right there's that third right we were talking about it the minor third to the third to the root this C note and I've got this uh, E note underneath it and then I'm hammering I'm plucking those two I'm picking them and then I'm hammering this finger down onto the C sharp from the C and then with this finger I grab the root the A right pick no pick pick. That's how you get the working man blues. Right? So we've got Now I'm just making it up every time but you get the gist. I'm doing it different every time. right before right C D A and then you can reach up and grab this 
or you can reach up and grab the E. You can do all three. So many cool things to do. Sounds like Batman. Try everything. Try everything. Try anything, man. Do it. Do it. I'm playing this. I'm playing the A, and then I'm reaching up here and I'm grabbing the G. So it's that seven. It's the A, and then it's that flat at seven. That's giving us this chord. That's giving us our seventh chord. But if we play them together, we get this. And now just, what if we move these notes around? You've heard it a million times. Right? So my recommendation to you guys is just put all the notes together. Just mess around, bend them, shake them, squeeze them, punch them. Whatever sounds good to you, go, yeah, that's cool. Let me try that over the chord. See what it sounds like. All right, so it's... Same thing we did down here. We're just moving it down a set of strings. Right? To the G, to the A, to the E. Then we're walking chromatically down, meaning one note next to the other directly. To the minor third. Even better. Doing that same thing we did up here. From the minor third to the major third to the root. So we get a lick something like. Let's try it a little faster. Phrase it however you like, however you can fit it in. There's a nice little blues lick, a little bit of theory behind it. Hopefully that helps you with your playing. I'm Frank Spear, that guitar guy. I'll see you in the next one.